Listen, you're blocking me from getting no, right. girl, no, we weren't. No, we weren't. No, we weren't. You're ignorant. Go ahead, call them. You stay somewhere. I'll beat your wife. Hey, y'all, my right now. Get away. Get the away. Get the away. Get the away. How you gonna hit? You gonna shoot me? Get the away. Oh, get away. Call the cops right now. There are a lot of facts that are missing, a lot of things that have only been seen from one side and not through our eyes. What are those in your mind? Um, this was just an attack, pure and simple from the other side. We were berated, our race was brought into it. Um, we tried to leave multiple times, I didn't want to fight, I didn't want an argument, I just I just wanted to go home to my children and I feed my children. Uh, this is not something that we wanted at all. Did you bump the daughter? And, and it, tell me what transpired before the cell phones started recording. Okay, yes. Uh, I went into the restaurant, I grabbed our food. We have a large family, so we had two large bags of food. and. Uh, whether it's due to coronavirus or not, uh, I noticed that there was only one door that was accessible to come in or out of that particular restaurant. And I opened the door and I wasn't sure if my bag bumped this young woman who was very close to me in very close proximity or if I bumped the door, but it could have been either. Um, again, it took me just a little bit to realize that I had bumped into something or someone and as I got back to the car I turned and kind of took a peek to see is someone looking at me like hey come on now or did I just bump the door and nothing actually happened uh, I turned around and the young girl was looking at me and she was clearly upset from the look on her face she came out and started yelling at me um, and I just held my left hand up and said, walk away, just walk away. And it escalated from there. And was it, how much time would you say <clears throat> elapsed from you and you, so they were coming in the door as you were going out? She, correct? it was just the, the young woman, um, right. coming in the door and I was coming out. Okay. And so how much time elapsed? Was it a few seconds was it a minute was it a couple of minutes maybe from that point to when we see the cell phone recording maybe 40 seconds so not very long no okay. no not at all okay um, <coughs> during the exchange um, walk me through what was running through your mind which exchange well the whole I mean we see like three minutes and ten seconds that's on video that it starts at that point, 40 seconds after the initial contact, well, why don't and we by the her, time they drive away. Yeah, why, why don't we have her start at the initial before she can get in her car? Because there were actually two different points. Okay. Well, I was kind of kind of... Yes, that's, that's fine. But just, so the generic question is, what was running through your mind during this heated exchange? Fear. Confusion. I didn't understand how it escalated to where it escalated, and I was afraid um, as it progressed um, you moved to the van we could see you got into the van you rolled down the window uh, you said in effect you were sorry or, or what was your intention at that point um, just to hopefully ease the tension between the two of us uh, I don't want her thinking that I did something purposefully wrong to either the teenager or the mother. Uh, I'm a, a very outgoing and friendly person. I, I love people. I work with people all the time. I love to get to know people's stories and get to know who they are at, at the core of their being. And I didn't want this woman to leave thinking that I didn't like her for any any reason. I just wanted to say, if something's happened, I'm, I'm truly sorry, but that's not me. That's not who I am. She was calling you uh, a racist. Her daughter was calling you ignorant. Um, 
and that sort of, I guess, helped to uh, uh, cause this to erupt even more. Um, as you look back at this now, well, let me ask you this, how many times have you watched this video? Um, a handful. I, it's really hard to watch. It's scary. Um, the more I see it, the more I realize I'm more afraid of that situation now than I was then. I was terrified at that moment and my terror is just exponentially greater since then, looking back, seeing how in danger I really was. As your husband was trying to back out your minivan, she had walked to the back, she had hit it with her hand or something, and at, at that point, that's when you get out of the van, correct? Correct. Where was your gun at that point? Were you carrying it on you or was it in the vehicle? It was holstered on my person. Okay. Because at one point early in the video, <clears throat> we were at the, still at the, looked like it was at the doorway of the restaurant and it was just getting started on the cell phone video. You can see you put your hand right here. Was yeah. that where the gun was at that point? It's near there. Um, I'm very protective of myself. It was, I think, more of an unconscious thing to just kind of protect my body and try to be as close to myself as I possibly could. Um, but yes, it, I mean, it, it's holstered near that area, correct. And it was under your blouse or your shirt? My shirt, so correct. it was not visible to anybody? No, absolutely not. Okay. Um, how long have you had a CPL? Just under a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, have you pulled the gun at any other time? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, what was the breaking point for you? felt the need to pull it in um, this situation? There were multiple people very rapidly and aggressively, it appeared, approaching me. Um, How many would you say when you say multiple? That I can remember three or four, but as I'm told, there's a lot more that were there. Um, realizing... It felt like they were all coming at you? Or, absolutely. Or describe them to me. Um, the mother very quickly was on me. The daughter was running from my left up to me. And within moments, a second or two, I had multiple people within two feet of me. And I just, I remember thinking, I'm not going home tonight. So you felt like you had no choice at that point but to pull the gun? Yeah. That was what was in your mind? Yeah, um, yeah just, uh, I need to live. I need to survive. You have how many kids? I have four. They were not with you? It was just you and your husband in the vehicle? They stayed home. And as you look back at the video, you said you watched it a handful of times. As you look at it, is there anything you would have done differently? I would have stayed home and cooked. I would have never left my house. Is there anything that you wish you had done that you, as you look back at it, you know, you can look back at it with 2020 hindsight. And I'm going to ask my client not to answer that question. You know, that's, uh, I don't want her to speculate about what she could have done differently. The facts are what the facts are as it relates to that. Fair enough. Um, I think I'm almost done. Uh, have you owned guns prior to being licensed about a year ago? Yes. But you just didn't carry them out? No, it's not legal to do that. Right. How, how long have you owned guns? A um, couple of years, maybe. Okay, so you consider yourself fairly familiar um, yeah, with a gun? I grew up around lots of handguns, lots of rifles. Um, they were just an everyday part of life. It was just something that was there. The gun you had, had it wasn't a revolver, it had <clears throat> a clip, correct? A magazine, correct. Yeah, yeah. So at one point you're seen chambering a bullet. So that meant business. 
that meant I'm, I'm about to die, and I don't want to die. Okay. Um, was there... Uh, I, I apologize for asking that, but was there anything else going on? You're not pregnant right now, right? Where you're... Um, we don't want to answer any questions about... Uh, Jillian's state whether or not she's pregnant. Okay. This is, uh, I mean, there couldn't be anything more private in somebody's that's fine, that's life. Right. And I, I, that's why I apologize in front of you. No, that's because, okay. Because women would say, hey, you know, look, if she's pregnant, her emotions are on overdrive anyway. Yeah. But we don't need no. to bring it okay. out on, uh, Fair enough. on the news channel or make any <laughs> announcements. That's not the appropriate point. Fair enough. And I, and I understand that and I respect that. That's why I asked it the way I did. Um, like I said, I'm almost done here. Um, you were being called ignorant. And a racist. What are your responses to that now? Um, I have never seen myself as ignorant or racist. I, like I said before, have a genuine love for every single person I meet. Everyone has a story. Everyone is important. And that really crushed me at the core of who I am because I genuinely door every person I meet. What uh, do you think in your mind should still, could still be done with the people on the other side of this case? The mother, was it a mother and two daughters or the mother and one daughter? Um, a mother and two daughters. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't want anything to happen to anyone. There is so much hate in this world at this point in time. And I don't want a single person to feel what we're feeling right now. I, I just, I truly want people to be blessed and happy. I don't want to hate on anyone. In this situation, I don't know if you watched what the sheriff said the other day when he did his news conference. Um, and he seemed to articulate that this comes down to and I kind of wrote down one of his comments. Nothing is worth escalating this when somebody gets hurt or killed. It's just not. And he's essentially saying that's why you both were charged, because you took it to that next level by pulling the gun, chambering the bullet, and so on. You obviously disagree with that, or what? what's your response to that appears to be an articulation of why the authorities charged you. We had no want to escalate anything. We wanted to go home. We wanted to leave in our car. We wanted the other family to be able to leave in their car. There was no desire for escalation on our part. There was a desire to live. Anything I didn't ask you you want to add? I don't think so. First of all, let's start with the, the obvious question. You're here to say what? To tell our side. Um, it's already been given out um, on one side, and there's two sides to this story. And what do you want people to know? Um, right from the get-go, we just wanted to go and feed our family. That's exactly what we set out to do that day. Um, with coronavirus and us being locked down, um, we don't get much luxury, and that was just one of the few things that we could. And as Jill said earlier, she usually makes meals and she would have made meals and it was just a nice treat for us to be able to go out that night. As this happened, you were in the van, you were in the vehicle. Uh, kind of walk me through what you went through and, and how you responded. Yeah, initially, um, because of Jillian's nature, she's very um, talkative and I assume that they were having a great conversation, perhaps about an outfit. She loves to point out outfits and so I didn't know anything of it, um, that there was any kind of problem until I heard her you know, saying that she felt threatened and to call the police and that's when I got out because they obviously were not allowing her to, to get into the van. She, they were blocking her from being able to do so. So I got out at that point and went, and as I was walking around the van, then I was able to open up the door and, and for her to go inside. Yeah, and that was when you came in contact with the mom and she said some things to you like, uh, you know, I'm going to beat your so-and-so and so on. Yeah, she threatened me. She said that she'd beat my white so-and-so too. 
as well. Um, and and I asked her, basically, why would you say that to me? And then you got back in, you're trying to back out. She walks behind your van, she hits the backside, and then that's sort of when things erupted. Walk me through your perspective of that. Yeah, um, as I'm rounding back to the vehicle, um, they were calling us racist and other names, and, and I turned to her and I said, you're calling her mean things that makes us a racist. You're calling her mean names, actually, is what I said. Um, and I just let it roll. Um, and I walked back to the van. And Jill felt so compelled that she rolled down her window and said, you know, I'm sorry that things may have happened to you that make you feel that white people are racist, but we're not it. That's what she's trying to convey at that point. Um, it was doing no well. It was just continuing. I could see. And so I rolled up the window and I tried to make our way out. Um, as you can see, we're at a curb, so I can only go one way. Um, and as we're backing, the car locks up. Huge booms pounding on the vehicle. We can't go any further. I have to get out to see what's going on at the rear of the vehicle. As I'm coming around, I see my wife is surrounded. Did you have a gun on you, or was it in the vehicle? Yes, I, I carry as well. So it was on your waist? Yeah, I, you had a holster? I can still carry, yes. Okay. Hey, Jim, sit up just a little bit because it's getting the mic to go. Okay, let's go ahead. All right. Um, so when you got out of the van, that's when you pulled the gun. That's not readily visible on the video. Jim, we're not going to get into exactly when the firearm was pulled. You know, that's going to be tried in court, okay. presumably, and we'll address it at that point. Okay. But uh, there's no question he pulled his gun, even though we can't necessarily see that on the video. His gun was not pointed at anybody. Okay. Did you just kind of pull it and have it pointed to the ground? Can you tell me that much? It'll be on the video, and it'll come out during the trial. Okay. During the trial. Uh, uh, <clears throat> you've heard your wife talk about how she was in fear of her life. What was your thought process? Exact same thing. Um, today's climate, you never know what's going to happen. That's the reason why we choose to carry our protection um, and take our protection into our own hands in that incident. Um, we, I feel for my wife's safety, for my safety, um, and once I realized that she was under control, I was trying to get us out of that situation. So I returned to the car, called 911, explained to them that we were blocked, that we couldn't go. Um, once she was able to, she, she'll return to the vehicle and, went, and then we pulled off. I just have a couple more questions for you. We were given a statement from Oakland University. You lost your job over this, correct? Yes, sir, I did. Have you had any conversation with them, or you know, what's your reaction to that at this point? Jim, we're working on issues with Oakland University, so we so don't want to comment on those right now. Stray into that. Okay. I think my last question for you, from, from my perspective, is um, does it surprise you how much attention this has gotten nationally and, if not, around the world? Once you um, put all of the facts together, yes, it does surprise me, but at the same time, today's, you never know what, what can take off, and especially if once the, um, you are a racist is uttered, then no, I don't um, you know, doubt why it's taken off. And your message to the world is what? We just wanted to feed our family and go home. We have four boys um, at home, and, and that was our whole reason for that. Um, evening was to, you know, just to have a special treat that evening and, um, you know, get some takeout food. Um, and, you know, that we, we love each other and we're, we're there for each other we, um, and our family. And so that's exactly what we do. And we just try to be the best um, that we can be for each other. Should there be any action for the other people on the other side? I want to let our attorneys handle that. All right. Anything I didn't ask you, you want to add? I don't believe so.